Welcome. The goal of this module is to guide you through how to create a simple guest SSID using a captive web portal to require guests to agree to an acceptable use policy before being granted access to the wireless LAN. For this next demonstration, from my Corp Wi-Fi wireless only network policy, I will add a simple guest SSID with a captive web portal to have guests agree to an acceptable use policy. To start, I will select my Corp Wi-Fi network policy and click OK. Then, next to SSIDs, I will click Choose. Then select New to create a guest SSID. I'll give this SSID a simple but obvious name, Guest Wi-Fi. For ease of use in this demonstration, I will set the access security of this SSID to open. Optionally, you can use WPA2 Personal or Private PSK access security options if you want to provide secure guest access. Because guests are going to be permitted to use my corporate network, I want to ensure they agree to an acceptable use policy before being granted access to the network. To enable this ability, I will check the box to enable captive web portal. Then, after saving the SSID, I will be presented with a link to configure captive web portal settings. Now I can save the SSID. In the Choose SSIDs dialog, I will make sure my Corp Wi Fi SSID and my Guest Wi Fi SSID are both selected. Then click OK. Now, under the Authentication column, you can see a CWP link. I will click that to configure CAPTA Web Portal settings. And then click New. The CAPTA Web Portal name is used for referencing this CAPTA Web Portal if you wish to use it in other SSIDs. I will call it CWP Use Policy. Now, I will specify the Captive Web Portal registration type. Here, you can select the option to determine how users proceed when they are prompted with a Captive Web Portal. You can set user authentication to authenticate users with a RADIUS server, set external authentication if you have a need to host your Captive Web Portal on a third-party server, you can set self-registration if you want your guests to enter their own contact information, or you can just have them agree to an acceptable use policy. For this Captive Web Portal, I will select Use Policy Acceptance for the registration type. You can use the default Captive Web Portal settings or add custom wording, background images, or even import your own web pages. To get an idea of what you can modify, I will expand the Captive Web Portal login page settings. To get an idea of what you can modify, I will expand the Captive Web Portal login page settings. Here you can decide to import your own custom web pages or modify automatically generated web pages. To modify the default login page, I will click Customize Login Page. Here you can change the background image, change the foreground color, Edit the Use Policy directly by typing into the text box on the screen and add a footer image. The online help provides further examples of how to modify Captive Web Portal settings. If you click the Preview button, you can see what the web page will look like. I will return back to the Captive Web Portal. And at this point, you can save or cancel your changes. Another setting I like to customize is what happens after someone agrees to the use policy. To do this, I expand the Customize Captive Web Portal Success page settings. Here you have the option to redirect to the web page the user originally requested or redirect to an external web page, which is a very common practice. Here I will redirect guests to the aerohive.com website.
Now that I have completed the captive web portal settings, I will save it. Now it's time to define the user access policies for guests. To do this, under the user profile column, I can click add remove. And then click new. As mentioned previously, user profiles define user policies for clients when they associate with an SSID. For example, you can assign a VLAN, firewall policies, QoS policies, service level agreements, and much more, which are enforced at the AP when the client associates. Here, I will create a simple user profile for guests that will assign guests to their own VLAN and limit their access using the AP's stateful firewall policy to only permit guests to access the internet. I will give it a name, Guess. I have configured the access switches in my network to support VLAN 8 for all my guests. I typically like to make the attribute number for the user profile the same as the VLAN number. So I will make the attribute number 8 and the VLAN 8 as well. Next, under the optional settings, I will expand the user profile. Next, under optional settings, I will expand user profiles and define my IP firewall policy. Next, under optional settings, I will expand user firewalls and define my IP firewall policy. From access is a policy enforced by the AP from wireless stations to the AP. I will select a built-in guest internet access only policy. I can click the modify icon to see what type of rules are being applied. Firewall rules are applied top-down and the first match wins. Here you can see that a wireless station is permitted to obtain DHCP from the network that it's permitted to access DNS, but, but it is not permitted to access any private RFC 1918 address. However, they are permitted to forward traffic to public IP addresses on the internet. I will click Cancel to go back to the user profile. Next, the two access policies are enforced from the AP to the wireless stations. I do not need to create a two access policy because responses to traffic initiated by clients is permitted back by the AP Stateful Firewall. I can leave this field empty and then set the default action to deny. And then set the default action to deny which denies all traffic that does not match a policy. Because there is no policy assigned for to access all traffic initiated to wireless stations is denied. There are many other settings that can be defined in the user profile in the optional settings, but for now I will keep it simple and click Save. Now I can select the guest user profile and click Save. Now you have a visual of the SSIDs, user profiles, and the VLANs that will be assigned to the users. Though there are many other settings you can define in the network policy, at this time I will click continue to go to the panel to update the configuration of the APs. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. You can now proceed to the next video in the Getting Started series.